hell is right. I just got finished saying to Tim yesterday, I'm pretty sure this is the worst year I've ever had. How do you figure? Let's see. I got shot. Hold still! Ah! Yeah, but you shot me first. Ah! You shot me! You stole that show from me. I want my own show, and I want it to be about wrestling, and I don't want him anywhere near it. None of what you said is going to happen. You stole my dead uncle's show, and then I got the show and lost it because of you. So I'm cancelled? I got chased by a flock of zombies. That was like three years ago, and they weren't zombies. They were people dressed up as zombies, and you shot one of those poor people. Oh my finger! Okay, well, the love of my life rejected me. I'm way more exciting than that guy. Check out my awesome car. That's, that's a nice car. You have a good night now. I asked her out first, and now she won't return my phone calls because of you. Maybe you should go, and you can try and take Adam with you. I got beat up more this year than any year that I can remember in my whole life. Good night, Adam. Oh, well then. Ah, 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 You just illustrated why you clearly deserve it. I'm just gonna pretend to understand what you mean by that. Good. Oh, and I lost my only two favorite TVs. Okay, well, some of that was my fault. Yeah, it was all your fault. But we got like 12 Twitter followers. Once again, just gonna pretend to understand. Oh, hi there. I'm James. This is Adam. And we're the creators of Hopeland 008. So, we've been putting this show out since about March. Some of you people have, on the internets have been watching it. The thing is that we wanted to talk about is how much different people have helped us with this show. We've So many people. It's We haven't, nobody has said no to us yet when we ask if we can use their location. I, we counted and we can think of seven different ones that we've done. Seven different shoots on location so far where we actually bothered to get permission. And... The countless people who showed up to help us when we need them. Yeah, we've had three different calls for extras, two of which you've seen, um, but all three times a crazy amount of people show up more than we thought would, more than we, more than the bare minimum, which is nice. Um, and all the extra actors that we've had, we've had fantastic Are people, amazing. like people who usually just show up at the very last minute because they have, you know, they answered the phone. Because somebody else dropped out or, you know, didn't have time. People have lives. The talented people we locked out and found. People who have just, out of the blue, donated their time for free to act on our show. We've had, uh, try to listen in chronological order because that's probably the blood way to go. Crow Rideout and his son, Samson Rideout, who showed up as extras for a couple of the early shoots. And Crow has been instrumental in the show continuing since that then. That was the one where nobody else showed up except for Crow. That was for the Force Field Part 2 where we were shooting in the parking lot and we called for extras and he was literally, we were going to have Joe be the one guy in the background shooting guns at us and he showed up with his son and uh, a friend of his and the three of them were our extras for that shoot and, and Crow has been supporting us financially since then actually. He's a producer on the show. Um... Mind frame. This is oh, our okay. camera guy, Second Joe. camera here. Joe's been BTS. instrumental to the show as well, right from the get-go. Joe's been with the show really longer than... like Longer than the show has been a concept of being show. Yeah, Joe's been with us since we did the terrible movie a few years ago. Um, and the really worst movie was. we've ever made. <laughs> yeah. I'd say the next movie will be better, but I don't think we're going to make another movie. Um... We should do an actual short from a long. We should do a short film, not a feature this like time. A half minute long, half an hour long uh, blood death movie. Yeah, like blood 25, death part two. 30 minutes, an actual. The only like, good one in the series. Oh, there's everybody who showed up for the zombie apocalypse. Um, Kelsey Dunlop, who's showed up for all sorts of extras, and we promise we are going to give you lines. 
we actually kind of have an idea, but things go so episode to episode that it's hard to keep things straight and get everything into the show that we want to. And I, that's another general apology. We have a plan for you. It'll be funny. Um, Zach McIntyre and his father, Steve McIntyre. Steve did all the makeup for the zombies. Pretty much, I don't know, all but two or three of them. He did the good-looking zombies, and I did the bad-looking zombies. Yeah. Then we did the lottery episode, which had Mark Dusso in it, who did a fantastic job, and he was one that showed up very last minute. I think we... What, we how many days notice we give him? Like, two? I think we had to recast him a couple of times because we couldn't find an actor to play the part. Yeah. I don't remember what the original plan for the... Uh, the... Um, what was he? The well, was supposed to be trainer. Yeah, I don't. The uh, physical and it wasn't fact the, from behind the camera. Be, it's supposed to be girl, and then we changed it. Yeah, yeah. Do we? Re I don't remember who the very who we actually had planned originally. But anyway, they dropped out, and we had him come in in the last like two days before. He, I think most of most every shot with him in it was done on the first take. We did a couple takes, but the first one we was always... We actually almost ruined the first take of his very first line when he runs in because we all started laughing behind the camera. Yeah, the, that was he one. Frickin' nailed it. Yeah, and then uh, the nudist was after that, which which the XWA helped us with a lot. XWA at, wrestling. That was Dick, Dick Durning. Durning. Holy shit! Uh, nobody. Jinx. <laughs> no, nobody. Like we. Okay, start this from the top. We had a wrestling ring that they had promised us we could be in for a few minutes, and then we get there, and there's a cage, which. Is better, but we didn't actually have a plan for the cage, and there was part of the, the thing where some of the characters were supposed to get out of the ring, and I wasn't sure if Scott was going to be able to climb over the ring or how long it would take to climb over the ring. Like it had to happen real quick, and then Durning basically rewrote the scene on the fly in the last minute, and it took me about ten seconds to realize that, that was actually not only fixed our problem, but was probably better than what we had. And that's where all of his suggestions were really good. Yeah, and he ad libbed all of his lines. I don't. I think he read what we wrote, but. We told him we wanted him to, to put his own spin on it, and he just made it fit like right and into the XWA. He, he got the gist of what we wanted him to say, and then said it the way his character would say it. He he was playing his own character. And that was another one where we had a bunch of extras who also who did a really good job, crying on James's poor uncle's funeral. And at the XWA wrestling, Malcolm Wallace helped us, who plays Toenail. Oh yeah, that's right. That's kind of how we. Well, Malcolm did such a good job. Like he was. RPA. He seemed to be the only person at first when we first showed up who really cared that the the wrestling episode get finished, and uh, his gusto made us decide we should probably cast him to play somebody else. Which actually, toenail was another one where we had somebody else in mind in the first place. Actually, I think we tried like three different people before. We that's about the point that we smacked ourselves in the head and said Malcolm would do just as good a job as anybody. So we called him, and that's that's toenail. Um, but back to the newness, we also had Heidi Haley in that, who was with us in our movie, who did a fantastic job as the um, producer of the, the TV. Like, she's, a lot of the characters we, uh, are supposed to just be kind of sarcastic reactions to my zaniness, and she did one of the more memorable jobs of smacking herself in the forehead. The girl, the girl had more people in it than anyone at all. Tim Turnell, who's a fantastic actor from St. John, should be in way more. Tim was actually one of the first people to actually truly give us a vote of confidence that, uh, you know, we... We're doing something that's worth it. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tim. And then also we had Pauline Brito, another one who filled in after uh, we couldn't, you know, the person who we wanted to do it wasn't available at the time. And uh, this is the second time that this has happened because we, we the exact same scenario happened when we were making the movie. We ended up recasting... A character with Pauline and she ended up doing uh, you know such a good job that it was probably better and it seemed more organic like as soon as we realized that that was who was gonna do it we felt better about the whole character in general and she did a, a amazing job on, in both scenarios in this one uh, we were extremely extremely pressed for time we the two shoots were there one of them was an hour and a half I think we had an hour and 20 minutes the other one was, it was our most press, it's our most press shoot we've ever had with most new characters with the most new characters and everybody was sick for the most part of that yeah. entire month yeah that's true it, too it was it was almost a not, the, not the sick with a ph or 
fat with Pierre. Well, that six, was the one six. where we had had no problem shooting any episode up till that, and everybody kind of saw it coming that eventually this was going to get difficult, and that was the episode where it, it started to. We've had more difficulties since then than that, but um, the other one was Detroit and Toenail. That was their introduction. Two of my favorite characters who will be making many reappearances. And uh, that the scene with them in the basement, um, not much to it, but uh, a lot of us think that that was one of our favorite scenes of the show so far. And we had several smoke machines. It, it was so and, much Oh, fun. and the smoke grenade, the smoke grenade shot at the end. Like, that was nuts. That um, was a real smoke grenade at the end. Yeah, not every shot was real smoke, but the... The one with the smoke pouring out of the grenade and the big one where Tim, or Scott's character, where Tim tire- comes running out carrying Tim Turnell's character, my dad. Sorry about all the Tims, but... Uh, we thought it was... It's funny. Tim, it's, Tim is funny. Actually, do you want to explain that story? It's... How many different Tim, Tims are there? <laughs> Tim Turnell Side was... Sidetrack moment. Okay. TM. First of all, there was the character Tim, who's our roommate, or my roommate. That part's real. Then, Tim Turnell who was supposed Scott to play first. Scott's character, Tim. No, that's where the name Tim ah, came from. Ah, right, because he was going to be called Tim. Yeah, Tim Turnell's character was going to be named Tim, and he was going to be what Scott was, which probably, again, was a bad idea. And then Scott ended up playing that part. It was Once we realized we had to recast it and read it two times, we are like, well, this was clearly written it, it for Scott. It has to be Scott. Yeah. Scott was... isn't even going to have to act. Like, I mean, he's going to have to dumb himself down a bit, but... As far as the way he talks and stuff has already fit perfectly. Scott has done a fantastic job from from where he was in the movie to what he does now. Yeah, he takes it pretty seriously. Streets ahead. Yeah. He looks a lot different, too. But that's why his name in the show is Tim. Because he was originally going to be played by Tim Turnell. And then we had that whole joke at the start with the two people named Tim, and we liked it enough that we kept it. And, and abused it several times. Now we're kicking times. ourselves in the ass. Because um, we keep naming people Tim. Yeah. We keep calling Scott... In real life, Tim, and then naming Tim Scott and Scott Tim, and it's just big Tim Scott, Scott Tim, Tim. Yeah, that Tim Turnell's real name in the show is now Tim as well. So now there's three Tims in the show, technically. But enough about the Tims. Also in The Girl, we had Pauline's friend, Ashlyn, who was played by a real-life Ashlyn, Ashlyn Sonoga. Uh, this was not her first time acting. She also did a really good job. She did a good job at making fun of us. She was not a big fan of either of us. We did, actually, her moving out west was probably the catalyst for her actually getting the part as soon as she did because we kept meaning to write something for her and it's so hard to figure this stuff out. And then at the last minute, she was moving out west and we realized that we and needed... we have to do it now or we're not going to get the chance to. Yeah, and then we were, and we were writing the girl episode and, and we realized that since Pauline's character was so nice that we had, if we added in a roommate who was maybe not the nicest girl in the world, that that would kind of even things out, and Ashlyn seemed to fit that bill pretty good. Moving on from the girl, we did the sex jacket, which was kind of like a more subtle episode, but in a, I don't know, in a way that I one's... I had a lot of fun. Yeah, that one's... I got to play a different character. That's the first one where I think that we really proved that we could make a funny episode without having to make it look like we burnt the house down, or, you know, go through a wrestling ring and a steel cage that type of thing it was it's low scale it's small scale but it's just as funny as, as some of the other ones and mike rogers did a fantastic job in that one as a radio dj uh, i knew when we wanted the part that he had to be like just sarcastic and have no patience for my character and which mike hasn't always had a mike lot of patience, no patience for me for in real life so but i've known him since we were kids and he agreed to do it right off the bat and did a he was actually one that we wanted to do it and he did it there was no runarounds with that in our newest episode, because that happened, uh, Dave Brito, who we should have cast a long time ago or something, and believe me, even though he robbed us in this episode, we will figure out a way to get him back here. because Dave is one of my favorite people to work with. Yeah, and he seems to be having a little bit more free time lately, and he, he's fantastic. Like, we have these. He's always, every time you give him, even you give him one line to say, he'll study it for half an hour and make sure that when he delivers that line, it's the best that it possibly Chandelier. can be. Chandelier. <laughs> And the, 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 he, has, yeah. he puts his own spin on things. Like, he always... The reason that that character has that funny boston accent lisp thing going on was because we gave Dave the script 45 minutes before he had to read it. I came running through and he said, I'm going to read this in a Boston accent. Is that okay? And I said, yes. Show it to me in a half hour and I'll tell you. If you bothered... If you ever do watch the terrible movie that we made, which I'm not going to endorse here, 
uh, Dave's one line that he delivered might be like the best moment in the movie. Uh, it's definitely in the top three. And then another one that uh, was also in that episode, Dave's partner, Andrew Porter, who is my supervisor at work, who wanted me to put him in the show for a long time. And I really wanted to because he's a hilarious character at work, but I kind of had my doubts because you never know working with people who've never even done this before. And uh, he was a pro, like, and a hilarious performance, I think. Like, he, he didn't have a whole lot... The original scene that we wrote for those guys wasn't nearly as funny as what actually ended up. Like, the day before or something, we came up with the idea of the making them trying to steal the flat screen TV, which is actually the ending of the episode. Like, it was kind of different in the original draft than it turned out. Andrew Porter's Fall into the <clears throat> Christmas Tree. First try, only try. That was among one of the best falls we've ever done. We're just like, hey, we need you to fall into the Christmas tree. Okay. Yeah. Took the Christmas tree right out. None of the lights worked after that. No, the, uh... He broke a circuit. He bent the whole tree. We fixed it. And also, we could probably also take this opportunity to thank Kevin McLeod, who is a guy who writes music on incomptech.com. We use his, uh, some of his music in almost every episode. Anytime that we need something that my band, Great Scott, won't fit, he's the guy to go to. Th uh, I don't know how many songs, but he wrote all of them. There's hundreds, like, there's every genre of music. It sounds like he's a pro at every genre he does. Um, really good music if you're into making videos. No, royalty free. No, we don't pay him nothing. Just pop a credit in there, and he is happy. Also, speaking of people who let us use their their locations, most recently, the Ultramar on Bayside Drive let us uh, film a real quick scene from the Going holiday Christmas episode. Special. Yeah, there. And... Um, we use the convenience store, uh, Blue Moose Convenience, on, on Westmoreland West Road. Road. Some, we cannot speak highly enough. Sometimes you'll catch the lucky. Yeah, once every three months you can catch the lucky. That's not a joke. You can win a TV there. The lucky is not something bad. It's a TV. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> no, lucky's never anything bad. Well, the, guy, the things you can catch from getting lucky are usually bad. The guy who runs the place is awesome. Uh, he... He didn't even really understand what we were talking about, and he still agreed to go through with it. He actually appears in the episode a little bit. And, uh, yeah, the, just big thanks to Blue Moose Convenience on Westmoreland Road. Go there. Um, what else has let us use their place? XWA Wrestling used their ring. Um, they were cooperative for the entire seven hours that we sat around waiting for a moment that we could use their ring. It was a very long day. It was something. Uh... Harborview High School, D District 8, eight? is it still called District, District 8? eight. Anglophone yeah. Sub-District South. St. John News chases everyone. He knows his stuff. Um, they were extremely... Vikings! They were surprisingly cooperative. I thought for sure that zombies and guns would probably not Usually be allowed... Usually they to... say you can't go near a school with zombies or guns. But it was in the summer break. There wasn't a lot of kids around, and the guns weren't real. The Colonial Inn... They were extremely cooperative. We did pay for our room now, but uh, that's where all the st all the office stuff from the nudist took. And CFMH gave us the use of the studio and that, which reminds me of places. One oh seven point three local FM. One oh seven local F one oh seven point three local FM St. John Community Radio. Let us use their station for the Sex Jacket episode. Street. Saddlebacks on Union Street. Above Union Station. Above Union Station on Union Street. You can find it behind. The service New Brunswick. Or across from the iceberg. Or across from the iceberg. They uh, let us use their bar for the scenes and the girl that were in a bar. They went, it went very well. We're probably going to be shooting there again pretty soon. Hopefully they'll let us. I'm pretty sure that they will because they're really easy to get along with. Um, great place, great people. So that, so let's go to the ending. Now the ending. That's been 2013. The ending has arrived. Our favorite year making videos because we have Spent Twitch, 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 Twitch. We have we made a movie two years ago. The movie was an hour and eighteen minutes long, I think. We have made I think the holiday episode put us over two hours in one year. So this is the most that we've ever made in one year. It's been the craziest, funnest year. Um tell your friends about the show. Click on things around the video. Follow us on Twitter. That's a big one. At Hoveland008. Everything's Hoveland008. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We try to keep it real. Keep it consistent. Not complicated. 
Except for you gotta remember the numbers and Hoveland. It's only two syllables. Come on, folks. We'll get with it. Um, There's a program. We're on it. And if you want to help out with the show, email us at guess what? Hoveland 8 at gmail.com. I think that covers it. I'm going to turn the camera off. Happy New no. Year. No, but that's the only time I'm alive. No, no. I think it's off if it's not. Oh, no. It's-